This was Andrew Andrew Schultz on uh, Charlemagne the God's show, whatever it is that he does. I don't I don't know what it, what it's called. Uh, but they were talking about Kamala Harris, and he goes on a nice little rant. And I wanted to point out something during the rant that I thought was really dumb. Now, Charlemagne the God is someone who I think said he wasn't going to support Biden, and then Kamala comes in and he's supporting Kamala. And when Andrew Schultz mentions the Tulsi Gabbard debate and the points that Tulsi Gabbard got out on, on Kamala Harris, uh, Charlemagne chimes in with, no, oh, that's not, that's not true. That's not. Okay. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit with you after we, after we hear the exchange, Yeah, that... because all the, nar- the, the narratives, which is what they'll call them from the Tulsi debate thing allegedly have been disproven by a bunch of people on, on TikTok and on X and all this kind of stuff, but they've been lyingly disproven by all these people. Yeah. And, and we even read the article from New York Times. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> bunch of stuff uh, on that. Let, let's watch this exchange. Who's voting Democrat? Probably about 80 million people. Right. Man, get the... Uh, ain't nobody voting for Kamala Harris. You're watch. What are you- Right. By the way, I don't know. it's You're been so tripping. funny right. to see everybody jump on the Kamala train immediately. Like it was unanimously accepted that she was kind of boring, weird, and goofy for what the last what four years, maybe even before that. She got lobotomized by Tulsi Gabbard in the debate. Everybody one, said one the bad exact bar. Thing. One bad like, bar. There's a million different things. Everybody was talking about her actual record, the fact that she's keeping these people in jail with the drug. Uh, Not with true, the, though. But whatever, that was still the conversation. That was the narrative. I got the narrative. Like, and then as second she becomes the, <laughs> she, the second she becomes the nominee, the, the everything was forgotten. Immediate amnesia. You always talk about how like Republicans get in line. Democrats get in line, bro. But, but that, Just, yes, yes. But, 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 who but, who but, should I follow? Yes, listen, yes, yes, yes. Is, but whatever that, you but, say, Daddy. But that's whatever why, you but say. But that's why it was good for President Biden to step down. Right. Because he was causing disarray yeah. when there didn't need to be no disarray. Nobody wanted to follow you. You yeah. need a leader that people want to follow. So what do you... Why is that Kamala Harris would be my question. Yeah. So when he jumps in immediately after... You should have said when she became like the de facto yeah. nominee. <laughs> yeah. After the coup, yes, that happened. Um, after someone posted a letter saying that he stepped down, and then he eventually had to agree. Yeah, <laughs> during those few days where we didn't hear anything from him or see him. Uh, but anyhow, he jumps in real quick and says that's not true, and that's immediately after An- Andrew Schultz says she kept these people in prison. Okay, now the thing that almost kind of got debunked was this she put 1500 people in in jail for marijuana convic- convictions and then laughed about it when asked if she ever smoked marijuana that part of the Tulsi debate that hasn't actually been disproven by the way the the videos that went around on this showed that she had only put 45 people in prison for this Tulsi Gabbard said she put 1500 people in jail and the jail statistics are different from the prison statistics. And most people for simple possession or even dealing in low amounts and stuff don't go to state prison. They go to county jails. All right. And so that's for 30 a, days or 60 yeah. days, 120 days. Generally, it's less. If it's less than a year, you can end up just going to a jail and not a prison. But they use the prison statistics to say that what people were saying about Kamala wasn't true. And since that, in their mind after not looking into it any further, got disproven, they decided that all the things that Tulsi Gabbard said about Kamala Harris were disproven. Mm-hmm. It was just a narrative. Yeah, that, yeah this, isn't that what he said? Yeah, he was yeah, like, well, that's the narrative. narrative. That was a narrative. That was a narrative. No, it's, a, it's actually true, okay? And here's one of the most important ones, I think, like how she fought to keep nonviolent prisoners locked up. The Supreme Court of California came out and said, uh, you are way over capacity, and not even we want you to drop it down to 100% of the capacity, the state of capacity. They wanted her to drop it down, California to drop it down to 137% of the capacity. Still of over. the prisons? What do you mean? Of capacity the, of what? The prisons. How many people can okay. be in the prisons? Gotcha. And so they said, you need to find a bunch of nonviolent, low-level criminals that are in prison, making this all be over capacity, and you need to release those people early. And she refused and she refused and she refused for years. And they kept filing motion, filing motion after motion. They were like, why don't we drop it down to 150% of capacity instead of 137? 
And at the end of the day, one of the arguments that her office made was that this would be really bad for fighting fires, wildfires in the state of California, because they use a lot of prisoners to fight wildfires in California. Jesus. And that that would be really bad for the state if they let these people out, because a lot of these people being nonviolent and low level are the ones that are allowed to leave and go do things. Yeah. And so it would be really bad for the state of California. It'd be All really, right? yeah, it'd be really bad for their slaves. Now, what happened was <laughs> the official, the, the if, Official documents there are that Kamala Harris's office said that that would be the problem. Kamala Harris's office posted a memo saying that it would be bad to let these people out because we needed them to fight fires. Well, who runs the office? It's her office. <laughs> but then she was able to come out and say, "Oh, I wasn't aware of that. I didn't. They didn't post. You're the that. leader. They didn't post that with my approval." You're the and so, leader. Like, you could just do that all the time. If you're someone who's got a bunch of people working for you and something goes out that is really bad politically for you, you just say, oh, I didn't know anything about that. I didn't post that. Well, she didn't post any of the things at her office ever. You think she writes it up and posts it That's what it you online? need. That's what, that, this you is know? what you need, a, a leader that doesn't take any accountability. Yeah. They need a leader, someone that they can follow, that they can believe in. And so this idea that the whole thing has Even been Even if it wasn't her fault, it should be her fault. She was As the, the leader. She, she was, was the one yeah. in charge. Mm -hmm. She used to say, this is my bad. Yeah. It doesn't matter if, I don't know, Tim sent it out without her permission. It was her fault for hiring Tim. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, that's dumb bleep number one. I thought that was, uh, that's that's very infuriating, infuriating to me. If you're just going to write off, like you got a lot of people who want to push criminal justice reform and the government's been treating people wrong and all this all these years. And all it takes for them is like, well... She's black, so I don't care about any of these reforms anymore. I don't care about people who actually got held when the Supreme Court said that they should be released. I just don't care anymore yeah. because she's black, and I want her to get into office, which means you don't actually care about any of these things at all. 